Today, I'm going to talk about Keller Einstein metrics. So, recall that a Riemannian manifold is Einstein if the Ricci curvature tensor is a constant times the metric tensor some c in r and depending on the signature of c we're talking about positive and negative uh, einstein metrics or if c is equal to zero then we're saying that our einstein metric is ricci flat okay so in the Keller context there's much more that one can say about einstein metrics so-called Keller einstein metrics so assume that x omega is Keller for the remainder of this lecture so x omega is Keller and we want to find uh, a Keller metric. So we want to find omega prime a Keller metric. Such that the Ricci form of omega is omega prime is equal to lambda times omega prime for lambda some uh, real number. Now here also the signature of lambda is, is going to be sort of important. And then historically, the first case to be worked out is the one that we will be focusing on. So we're going to assume for the lecture that lambda is equal, so lambda is negative. And I will describe some of the work of Oban Yao that's uh, quick, cr critical in, in this direction. I think around 78. Okay, so the first observation you can make is that actually in this case, you can take lambda to be equal to negative one. Why? Well, so the Ricci curvature of a rescaled version of a Keller metric or even Riemannian metric is the same as the original uh, Riemannian metric. So in particular, uh, if you rescale in this equation by the absolute value of lambda, right, you can assume so we actually just want, so we want a slightly slimper uh, killer einstein metrics of this type. Now, uh, so what I will try to focus on in the first part of the lecture is, is how you find uh, a, a partial differential equation for, for this equation. Okay. So the starting point is the discrepancy formula for Ricci curvature of, uh, Killer metrics. All right, so recall the following result. So if omega prime and omega double prime are killer metrics, then there is a discrepancy formula for their uh, uh, corresponding Ricci, Ricci forms. So it's equal to. Right. So here, what you see is a quotient of the corresponding volume forms. So wh what you get from here automatically is that the, the ROM class of uh, uh, the, the Ricci form is always fixed. And you can call this your first churn class, though there's, there's much, uh, much better definitions of the so-called first churn class. Uh, so one, uh, one thing that you get from here is that, so, so if this KE equation holds, then the, the ROM class of your killer metrics has to be from the negative of, of C1, right? So, so let's assume that KE holds. This implies that the, the ROM class of your killer Einstein metric has to be negative of c1x okay now so so this this tells you that in the negative of the first turn class there has to be a killer metric now this this is not always true so so we need to assume this a priori before we can we we can even discuss killer Einstein metrics in this case so let's do that so assume that we actually have a killer metric with that satisfies this condition. So, and then let's take our back 
background Kähler metric to be just that. So assume that omega satisfies omega the wrong is equal to negative C1x. Okay, so if this is the case, then going back to the discrepancy, uh, oh, sorry, so, so then a bit of Hodge theory tells you what? Well, Ricci of omega is from C1x and negative of omega is also from C1x. So they're from the same uh, Duran class. So by the del del bar lemma, there exists a smooth function so that this identity holds. So by this is by the del del bar lemma. Okay, and then our goal is really to get rid of this F here for some Kähler metric, right? So that will be the same as the kähler einstein condition. Okay, so let's, let's write this down one last time. So we want omega prime such that Ricci of omega prime is equal to negative omega prime. But also omega prime has the same Duran class as omega negative C1x. So another application of del der bar lemma tells us that you can actually write omega prime as omega plus i del del bar phi for some phi smooth function and it's uniquely determined up to a constant. So here in this equation I can be slightly more specific that we actually don't want omega but we want omega prime equals omega plus i del del bar phi. Okay, so this is what we want. And then the reason why I'm insisting on this specific form, because this specific form of the equation tells you that we're actually from now on looking for not a Kähler metric, but actually we're looking for a function, a Kähler potential. So phi is a Kähler potential. So this is sort of a typical occurrence in geometric analysis. You're looking for geometric objects and you realize that after imposing uh, appropriate amount of constraints, you could actually replace those geometric objects by functions, so-called potentials, and you do some analysis to find the functions, usually <coughs> PD theory. Okay, good. So now let us subs let me subtract this equation from this equation. Okay, so then you will get on the left Ricci omega minus Ricci of omega plus i del del bar phi equaling. So there will be some cancellation, and then I will get i del del bar f plus. Okay, so on this side, we can use the discrepancy formula I just told you about. Get omega phi eps. Okay, so now there's i del del bar on the left, i del del bar on the right. So another application of Hodge theory tells you that you can get rid of the idea del bar by picking up a constant, right? So log of omega phi to the n is equal to constant. Now this constant doesn't really play a role here because you can just suck the constant into the potential phi, right? So uh, obviously, right? So when we're talking about the underlying metric, the constant will not play a role. When you take the i del del bar of the constant, it will be just zero, right? So all in all, the, our equation will be after exp exponentiating this, and I will get the phi on the other side. Sorry, I will get the omega to the n on the other side. So this is the KE equation, all right? And then here, if you're an analyst, you just say, I'm looking for a phi smooth function that satisfies this positivity 
Okay, so much can be said about how one solves such an equation, and I'll do that in uh, uh, forthcoming lectures. Today, I'm just going to wrap up this uh, lecture by showing that solutions to this equation are unique. In particular, Kähler-Einstein metrics are unique. So let me just argue uniqueness. Okay, so let's call this Ke. So I think this uniqueness result goes back to Kalabi, who in many ways was the initiator of uh, the study of canonical Kähler metrics. Okay, so assume that in addition to this phi solving the equation, we also have a psi that solves this equation. Okay, so both solve Ke. So what you can do is just divide this equation by that equation and you will get omega phi Make up psi, there's some simplification equal to uh, phi minus psi. Okay, so now a bit of maximum principle. So phi minus psi is a smooth function, so it is maximized somewhere on the compact manifold x. So there exists an x0 x such that phi x0 minus psi x0 is equal to phi psi. Okay. So on the maximizing point, obviously the Hessian is uh, negative semi-definite. So the real part, which is the complexified Hessian is also going to be negative semi-definite, right? So from this, we get that. The complexified Hessian at x0 is negative semi definite. And that will give us something nice. Well, what exactly? So let's look at the left hand side here at x0. So that is going to be uh, big up psi plus i del del bar of phi minus. Now, I just learned that at x0, this is negative semi-definite, right? So this form here is less than this one, one form down here. So this all together, when you compare determinants will be less than one. So what I will get is that the left-hand side is less than one. So here, the right-hand side is also less than one at x0, of course. Okay, so... I will get that phi x0 minus psi x0 is less than one. But this was the maximum of phi minus psi on x. So I will get phi minus psi is less than, oh, sorry. So here is zero because you take the log of this equation. So phi minus psi has to be less than zero. Okay, so now when you play the same exact argument at the minimum, so now pick y in x such that phi y0 minus psi y0 is equal to the minimum of phi minus psi on x. So by playing the same game, you get that phi minus psi is actually positive, right? So these two circled inequalities will imply that phi is equal to psi, what you want to show. So in the next lecture, I'll try to elaborate on existence. So the existence will go through this so-called continuity method, which will use a priori estimates for partial differential equations. Thanks for your attention.